So as most of you might know, if you've been following along the channel for a while now, I've been building this app for about 60 days now. It's an app that's designed to help job seekers like you and I land our dream jobs much quicker. Uh, I'm currently almost done with the version uh, one that I want to release. Uh, I have a couple more things that I need to do in terms of Stripe integration. I need to productionize that and uh, productionize my database and clean up the front end a little bit better, make the landing page more attractive. Uh, and you know legal documentation like terms of service you know privacy policy and also allow uh, users to contact me for feature requests or support tickets and stuff like that uh, I haven't really been recording much of that work for over the past two three weeks and I uh, I've been doing a lot of other work for uh, my job or for uh, my personal life so I feel I felt bad and I feel like uh, the reason one of the reasons I started this whole documentation process of me building this app was to showcase uh, the whole journey of building something uh, from start to finish and I want to follow through with that so uh, this is going to be a day in the life of me uh, building my side app or my side project and uh, hopefully getting a lot of progress uh, and getting closer to release uh, i know a lot of you guys out there uh, are in similar boats uh, who want to build something uh, but just feel like there's a lot of uh, friction uh, from getting to where you want to be or from where you are to where you want to be so uh, i hope that this video can help push you guys to actually build something i am not uh, an advanced programmer i'm not great at software engineering computer science i'm very mid i understand fundamentals and programming i understand how to learn i understand how to google so that's basically what i've been doing up to this point so yeah if there's one thing that i want you guys to take away from this video it's that uh it's possible if you just try every time you hit a roadblock that's just a learning opportunity in my opinion at least uh, and that's what I've been learning throughout this journey. The reason I started this was one, because I wanted to make the whole job search process much easier, less intimidating. And two, I wanted to learn a lot more uh, software engineering skills, especially in production. Uh, I can do a lot of coding in the back end. I can do a lot of uh, basic apps like building tic-tac-toe. I understand how stacks work, data structures. I understand how for loops, if loops work, but I want to combine all that knowledge and make something out of it. I wanted to use all the knowledge I have learned in school from my own projects, my side projects that never really got uh, to a point where I can publish it. And I wanted to put all that into a single app that I can use and publish uh, and have you guys use or have my friends and family use something that's actually meaningful and impactful. So, yeah, that's that's what I've been doing uh, over the past few months. Uh, and I believe it's come uh, it's come a pretty far away. Uh, I think I'm going to do a demo in this video or I hope to. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, I'm really excited to uh, share some of this work with you guys and hopefully motivate some of you guys to do the same. Uh, build your own apps or start something end to end. Uh, this really, I guess, simulates what you'll be doing for a company, at least on a low or high level, uh, just so you understand, you know, what communication looks like, what version control looks like, how you can actually productionize stuff, what's the difference between dev and prod. Uh, and I think that's a very helpful skill that not a lot of people know, especially students. I don't think many students actually go through this uh, process. At least I wasn't taught this in school. So yeah, if you guys are interested in stuff like that, I highly recommend trying it out for yourself. I strongly do believe that will help you land a job much quicker if you're in the job search process. So, but yeah, just like any other advice on the internet, figure out what works best for you, do your own research, and then proceed from there. But the first thing I wanna to do today is get this car clean just because it's been a mess since I got it and I just wanna get it out of my way so I can focus on other things. Uh, and then from there, I have a couple of things that I listed down that I need to get done today. Uh, I'm sure more things will come up. So yeah, I'll catch you guys back in a bit. We just got back from the car wash. Uh, it was a lot more expensive than I thought, but that's besides the point. Uh, for now, I wanna get to a cafe or a library. I don't know if the school's library is open, but I wanna get out of the house to get work done. I just feel more productive when I'm in social settings. Uh, I have no rational reason behind it. It could be the social pressure. Maybe there's just less distractions uh, there than at home. So yeah, that's the plan for today. I'll fill you guys in on what I have to do today. Uh, it shouldn't be too much. All the heavy lifting is pretty much done. Uh, just a couple of things that I need to uh, solve or complete before comfortably launching this project. So, so yeah, uh, I guess I'll see you guys in a bit. So 
So I wanted to take some time to talk to you guys about growth. One of the reasons I started this project was because I felt like I was plateauing in terms of learning outside of work. For those of you who are new here, I'm a data scientist working at a tech startup and I've been working here while getting my bachelor's degree. After graduating, I felt like I was stagnating a lot and also felt like I needed to do more. In fact, I felt like this a lot during school. Every time I got bored with classes, I found some new project or app to build that would spike my interest up again. I remember doing one day automations with Python, which I still use to this day. Anyway, all that kind of helped me grow and improve my skill set, which ultimately helped me get to where I am today. Everything I want to do, I can, and everything I can is kind of on me. So I really have to find a way to make things work and meet my goals. I can't just keep moving the goalpost. Okay, uh, so we moved to acquire your spot just so I can talk to you guys real quick. Uh, but I'm pretty much halfway or three quarters done with what I w wanted to do. The rest is just some tedious legal documentation, which is not too bad. I also realized there was a there was an issue when I was pushing this to prod. Uh, basically, my Vercel. I think there's a limit to how long your API calls can take. Uh, so I Googled and I found that the issue was I was using the free tier, which had a limitation. So I just upgraded to the pay tier and it works, uh, which is a problem. One, because I don't know when I'm going to launch this and I don't want to incur too much cost. It's like 20 bucks a month, so it's not too bad. But still, if I can uh, prolong it, I would like to prolong it. So I don't know what I'm going to do from here. Uh, I might just suck it up and deal with the cost or... Uh, push it off and just trust that everything I do in dev will work in prod. Not the smartest thing I know, but it is what it is. So yeah, let me know what you guys think down below. I also wanted to talk about um, the importance of side projects, or at least uh, the importance to me, how they impacted my career, my personal life and stuff like that. Me personally, I definitely wouldn't be where I am today if I didn't do any side projects. I learned best through application. So for most of my formal education, I took a lot of uh, purely theory based classes with very little uh, actual implementation or practical uh, implementation. So it was quite challenging for me to understand the concepts or the theory uh, really well. That's why very early on in my career, my uh, college years, I started uh, pushing myself to do side projects. The goal here was for me to find a project that is kind of similar or aligned with what I'm learning in class and try to implement it. Uh, it, it could be with code or by hand. Uh, the goal was just for me to understand what I was learning in class. And I, kind of, I think it kind of worked for me uh, for most classes at least. I just found it very fun to build and implement the concepts that I was learning. Uh, I think most people with ADHD have a problem with delaying gratification. So uh, just seeing the code run not breaking is great uh, instead of waiting for your grades to come back and stuff like that. And I know it's not one-to-one. -one. I know uh, just because your code run doesn't mean you understand the concept one-to-one -one or 100%, but it's just directionally positive. It's a good way to start learning, especially if you have learning disabilities or if you just struggle learning new things uh, altogether. So if you're someone like me or if you're someone who faces uh, challenges trying to understand things just by reading a textbook, I highly recommend uh, implementing some side projects or at least just trying to draw things out, trying to map things out on paper. That really helped me a lot. A lot. It doesn't really have to be something super crazy. It could be something as simple as a for loop. Uh, you could write down your thought process for each iteration of the loop, what you think it's doing, or a skip list, or even an ABL. Uh, yeah, there's nothing really concrete here that you have to follow. It's just what works for you that's that's what i recommend this project by far is the biggest personal project that i've worked on uh aside from work of course uh, and i think it's super super great because i faced a lot of challenges and blockages that i would never have faced when it comes to technical implementation productionizing things uh, trying to understand what's different in dev and prod uh, all these things i wouldn't really have faced if i didn't take on this project so i'm super grateful that i made the decision to take it on uh, and all the blockages, all the problems that I faced throughout the way, uh, sometimes I felt super frustrated just because I couldn't find a solution. It could take days, maybe even weeks. Uh, but at the end of the day, every step I take towards trying to solve that problem, trying to overcome that uh, challenge or blockage is directionally positive for my personal life and my career. And for most cases, someone else has already faced the same problem. So it's just a matter of uh, trying to find their um, resources, their documentation, their solution, or just finding a community who are currently facing the same problem and trying to brainstorm a way to overcome it together. And that's exactly why I think communities these days are so important. That's why I started this channel. That's why I started the Discord server uh, to try and build a community of people who are also interested in building stuff and helping other people build stuff in uh, like-minded individuals who are trying to achieve the same goal like landing a job or finding out what works best for a certain use case. Uh, so yeah, I started a Discord server, I think 60 days ago or 90 days ago, something like that. Uh, and it's grown a lot since then. I've had a lot of people help me out with the project that I'm currently building. You know, 
although this is my personal project and I'm kind of building this out myself, a lot of you guys have given me valuable feedback and input, which I truly appreciate. It's made me save a lot of time and also made a lot of better decisions. So thank you again for that. Anyway, it's getting really hot and I forgot to bring my charger. So I'm gonna head home and finish the rest of the work I have planned uh, at home and also give you guys a quick demo if I can. I must have went blind tonight cause I swear that you out of sight. Man, I'm so up, I could be a pilot and I just hope trying to catch a flight. <laughs> So let me get the digits. I call right now if you're with it. I've seen a thousand pretty girls in this room. A dollar I've been looking for you. All right, uh, so we just got home. I got changed because it got hot. Uh, I also had some food. I'm gonna go do that demo right now so you guys can actually see what I've been working on, see the app for how it is right now, and give me your feedback if you have any. Uh, if you guys want, I post some updates on the Discord server. I'll leave a link down in the description below and also leave a link to the waitlist for you guys who are interested in testing this thing out. I have a couple dozen people uh, who are wanting to be the beta testers, which is great because there's definitely gonna be some bugs and I need feedback so I can improve and iterate on the version that I currently have. Uh, so yeah, that's the plan. Uh, let me go set you guys up for that demo real quick. All right, so this is the landing page. Um, I'm not too sure how much I've updated since I recorded last, but uh, there's been a couple changes. Like there's animations now, uh, moving text, highlights. Uh, there's also a different page for if you're logged in or not. For the purposes of this video, I'm gonna focus on uh, users who are logged in. Um, you know, just basic highlights on what the app does, uh, what, what an ATS is, frequently asked questions that I think uh, people will be interested in uh, getting answers to, and some pricing. This is the pricing packages that I'm gonna go for right now. Obviously, there's discounts if you go for annual. All of this is connected to Stripe uh, and Superbase, so uh, all that is done, and a contact page. I don't have an SMTP set up just yet, so right now I'm using a super inefficient way of getting uh, feedback from, from, from users, I guess. Uh, so. Uh, if you guys have an ideal way of setting that up, let me know down in the comment section below or in the Discord server. But yeah, the main functionality of the app is in the applications or resume score page. So you hit the resume score, you upload your resume. So for my case, it would be um, this resume right here. And then the job description. I, I have a job description pulled up uh, and also a job URL. So I'm just gonna copy that, paste it in. For the case, uh, for the, this use case, I'm just gonna use Jake's resume. For those of you who don't know, Jake's resume is kind of the industry standard for uh, ATS friendly resumes. I'm gonna use a software engineering resume and job just for this video. And then once you get there, you get like the resume score, which is for this case, 75%. Resume suggestions, missing requirements, job requirements, and detail analysis. So all of this can be stored if you wanted to. Uh, if you're actually applying for the job, you would hit save as application. Or if you just wanna use the feedback here, uh, to make improvements on your resume, you can. Uh, for this case, I'm just gonna save as application. It's gonna ask for company name. So in this case, it's Databricks, and then job URL, I'm pasting that right there. And once you hit submit, it's gonna redirect you to the application page, or it should. Here we go, and these are just test runs. So uh, that's, yeah, that's basically how it works uh, in a high level summary. That's the five second pitch. That's the main functionality again. Uh, but once you have applications tracked, this also works as an ATS for a job seeker. So as a job seeker, I kind of want to track my applications over time. This is just a test account, so not everything's here, but I would want to see you know statuses for previous applications, scores for the resumes that I did apply, the feedback for those uh, applications and stuff like that. Uh, if I click the resume, I can actually see the resume. Uh, it's stored in S3 bucket, so you can kind of see the resume too. And you can also uh, click the job URL or click the job name and you get to the job URL. So that's pretty neat too. Um, it has IDs you can filter by. Everything here is dynamic, so you can filter by column, you can filter by ID. Uh, and once you go over 10 pages or 10 applications, it, it uh, extends to different pages, so that's neat. Uh, there's an about page and a contact page like I showed before. And there's also a profile uh, page for you guys to look at your specific uh, user profile metrics, like how many applications, what your interviewed application rate and stuff like that. Uh, so for this account, like I said before, it's just a test account, so not much, but all this is dynamic and it updates real time. Uh, there's a chart here, which I thought was pretty neat uh, to include, just so you guys can see uh, how your, your how your progress is, I guess, over time. I do plan on including a filter here for date, so you can go ahead and do like last last seven days or last 30 days, because uh, I would assume job seekers would use this tool uh, when they're looking for a job, which might be seasonal, so uh, that's gonna be pretty neat. And you can always update your statuses. So let's say this was not an offer, this could be a rejection, so you had rejected. This is updated, redirect, redirects you to the application page, uh, and then you can go back and hit profile. Take, should take you to the profile page, and then once you're at the profile page, uh, you can go ahead and look at uh, certain things like your metrics again. So yeah, right here is kind of your user profile settings where you can uh, 
remove your plan or cancel your subscription or up upgrade your subscription to a higher tier or buy more tokens so those are like individual tokens that you get to use everything here is token based so if you're using the free trial you get like three tokens uh, which you can use to either get your resume score or get an application an application is uh, kind of the bigger picture so if you're storing an application you get everything else with it if you're just getting a resume score you get like some basic feedback uh, and yeah you can always upgrade your plan you can always downgrade or cancel everything's connected to stripe uh, and then you can buy more tokens if you just want like maybe one or two tokens instead of getting like 30 for the month um, yeah that's pretty much it the dashboard is going to be upgraded when i do find more things that I, that I can include right now it's pretty basic it just includes like general statistics that uh it's pulling in so let's say i uh, go to applications and i change a couple things like i get myself a couple more offers maybe and maybe more interviews and then i go back to the profiles page Yeah, it updated right here. So that's all nice and neat. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. Uh, all of this was done with Next.js, TypeScript, uh, Superbase, uh, Postgres, obviously, and Stripe. Uh, this is hosted on Vercel. I think Vercel is probably the best uh, best hosting platform for uh, something like this, just because of the technology that I'm using. I do plan to implement uh, other backends like Python backend. I just think Python uh, has a lot of value to provide when it comes to machine learning. Uh, so yeah, that's something I wanna implement. And also I do plan on incorporating more uh, algorithms or models, which can be difficult to use with Next.js. So yeah, uh, let me know your thoughts down below. I'm really open to feedback. I really want to improve this and make it the best possible app I can for this use case. I, I truly do think there's a gap in the market when it comes to uh, ATS for job seekers, not for uh, companies, not, not for big businesses to uh, you know prevent you from getting a job or filter you out. I truly do think job seekers or candidates like myself uh, can do a lot better in terms of understanding the job market, how things work, and how their uh, whole process or whole application is being processed uh, with all these HR systems. So yeah, uh, that's the goal for this project. That's the idea here. And I think uh, in the future, or currently at least, this is probably one of the best ones out there. And I think uh, implementing this would be a real win for uh, individuals like myself or individuals like who, you guys who may be interested in applying for jobs. But yeah, aside from that, I think the next steps from here is probably getting all the legal documentation like terms of service, privacy policy all set up. I know Stripe has a lot of dispute issues, so I want to make sure I, I figure out a way to handle that. I know Byte Dispute, someone recommended that on Discord. Thank you for that, by the way. Uh, was a great recommendation. I think I might find a better or a more... Um, financially uh, uh, reasonable uh, alternative to bite dispute if it makes sense if there is one out there uh, so yeah those are my next steps uh, if you guys have any other feedback do let me know down in the comment section below thank you guys so much for watching the video if you have any questions comments or concerns leave them down below and as always i'll see you in the next one